You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. OK, after a couple of preparatory sessions, let's now really get into this passage itself and what this passage is doing and saying about the story of the relationship between Jeremiah and his God and Judah as a third party. How does this passage characterize Jeremiah and Yahweh? At the start, in 1118-19, Jeremiah presents himself as naive and threatened, but also presents himself as being informed by God, as having a special relationship with Yahweh. Verse 20 goes on to affirm that Yahweh of hosts judges right. Interestingly here, the affirmation is both prolonged and or defined further, testing the heart and the mind. But it merely leads to a plea for vengeance. It's almost as if Jeremiah is buttering Yahweh up. In the next verses, to close chapter 11, Yahweh responds predictably. I can't help wondering if it's too predictably. If Yahweh is deliberately offering Jeremiah what any god would offer to his servant. You'll see why later on. Because we read right on into 12 verse 1 which starts simply enough repeating You are right, Yahweh, if, when or for, I bring a case to you. But then Jeremiah introduces the sting. But judgments I will speak to you or but I'd like to talk about your judgments and he goes on why do the wicked prosper before God can answer this general case a problem which runs through the Bible Jeremiah presents his own situation as an example he's just a touch self-centered at this point here Jeremiah like several biblical heroes questions or even challenges God now in 12.3 he both focuses the general problem on himself and requests that God actually do what he promised or threatened to do in 11.21-23 before Jeremiah hastily turns back to the bigger picture in verse 4 the whole land, even the land not just the people is troubled by the evil of its inhabitants the nature of this bad, this evil, is unspecified but if we've read the rest of the book so far we know anyway, Jeremiah does specify at the end because he says because they say he will not see our ends the people believe that God is ignorant and can be tricked which isn't surprising because most people in the ancient Near East believed that gods could be tricked fooled into doing what you wanted if you were smart enough so Jeremiah seems to feel that God needs help God needs help in ensuring that his people realize that he really is God God needs help to be God Jeremiah's own view of God is muddled he knows that God is righteous and all-knowing and yet he seems to feel that God is in need of protecting from himself it's into this context that Yahweh responds revealing clearly that it's Jeremiah and not he who's in need of looking after if you've raced with footrunners and they've wearied you how will you compete with horses? if in a safe land you fall down how will you fare in the thickets of the Jordan? even your kinsfolk and your own family even they've dealt treacherously with you but then in verse 7 because I think we have to read on at least as far as verse 7 even though traditionally scholars have stopped at the end of 6 in verse 7 Yahweh reveals with great poignancy God's broken heart and why Jeremiah must steal his heart Jeremiah has given the reasons himself but he's not understood what he was saying for Yahweh says I have forsaken my house I've abandoned my heritage I've given the beloved of my heart into the hands of her enemies that's why Jeremiah must steal his heart and must become the wall of iron that Yahweh called him to be at the beginning you see, this passage, as part of the book, is presenting a complex and evolving, developing, growing, changing relationship between Yahweh and Jeremiah as Yahweh 
educates his profit.